Class Defense, we celebrate the winners of the 2017 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year Award. We'll learn how the farmers of this Washington County business became leaders in Vermont's dairy industry by staying true to their roots and investing in the future. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. As you can see today, we are on location. Our set is Fairmont Farm in East Montpelier, the 2017 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. Fairmont Farm was formed in 1992 when three local family farms came together as one. Today, the farm is owned and operated by Richard and Bonnie Hall and Tucker Purchase. With a herd of 1,600 cows, Fairmont Farm is one of the largest dairy farms in Vermont. They employ 30 full and part-time employees, and they're leaders when it comes to best management practices to protect water quality on the 3,600 acres of the farm. The farm is owned by the halls and purchase, but it's become a gathering place for the community as well. This is the home of the utterly crazy 4-H club, life on the farm summer camps, and the backdrop for everything from snowmobile trails to weddings. It's my honor to introduce Richard and Bonnie Hall. Congratulations so much for being named the Dairy Farm of the Year for Vermont in 2017. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, Richard, you're not the first member of your family to win this award. Tell us about other members of your family who've been honored. Well, my dad and mom, uh, John and Donna Hall, uh, won uh, the award in the mid-'80s. And um, so they are still presently uh, a part of the farm and they um, and they we enjoy seeing them on a regular basis mm -hmm. and so how has dairy farming in Vermont changed since your parents won this award in 1986 well um, yeah it's changed quite a bit I mean there's just a lot fewer farms uh, the farm sizes in generally have, have grown quite a bit and um, Austin Cleves who was also a dairy Farm of the Year back in the 80s reminded me that it was a lot more competitive back then to be Dairy Farm of the Year than it is today. But there's just fewer farms today, and the farms uh, that have gone out, generally their land base has been picked up by the larger farms. Mm -hmm. Could you have continued farming on your own if you hadn't formed Fairmont Farm in 1992, do you think? Uh, that's a hard question. I mean, I think that we chose to kind of grow in order to... Uh, really go through some general generational transfers that we saw coming up. It allowed um, us to uh, buy out the uh, older generations and, and also bring in uh, younger generations like we did with uh, Tucker Purchase. So. And so Bonnie, what made you decide to be involved with 4-H and host a summer camp as if you're not busy enough on the farm as it is? Um, we started the summer camp. This will be our third year. Um, and it was our oldest daughter Clara's idea when she came back to the farm a few years ago. Um, she just thought it would be great to get more people to see what we do here on the farm. And um, we started out doing two weeks a summer, um, thinking that you know we didn't know if we'd get 10 kids or how many. And um, the first summer we had, um, I think, 12 kids one week and 15 the next. We run it from nine to three every day, and the kids um, get their own calf assigned to them. They um, learn how to feed them, wash them, brush them, lead them. We do a little practice show at the end. Um, and then the parents all come on Friday to watch the show, and then they come do a tour of the farm as well. Mm -hmm. What's some of the feedback that you've gotten from families? Um, it's really been great. Um, people have been really into it and excited. Um, last year we had 20 kids each week and um, had to turn some away. This year we already have 25 kids signed up each week <laughs> and um, you know we're full. I think um, because it takes both Clara and I away from our regular activities. Right. So you know unless we brought somebody else in to specifically help with camps I think probably two weeks is our limit um, and 25 kids will be a challenge but I think we've got um, we've got some good staff to help us do that. And what ages are the kids usually? Um, 6 to 12 mm -hmm. and we have um, you know a good mix of all of that. We've got a lot of returning kids. Um, some of these kids this is going to be their third year so um, they love coming back. The mornings are spent you know, washing and doing chores and leading their calves. And then in the afternoon, we spend time doing different workshops. We talk about um, 
my father-in-law John comes and talks about some farm history with the kids. We've done some fire safety. We've had the vet come talk to the kids. We've done some tours. We've been to the Cabot Creamery. Um, so that's kind of what our day looks like. Tell me a little bit now about the 4-H club, Utterly Crazy. <laughs> Utterly Crazy was formed about eight years ago when our youngest daughter, Isabel, was eight. Um, we just thought it'd be a great experience for her and um, what 4-H has to offer kids. And um, the club has kind of varied in size over the last eight years. Um, but this year is definitely our biggest. We've got 13 kids. and. Um, Except for Isabel, they're all non-farm kids, um, so that can that's a challenge. You know, <laughs> the, the parents don't know and the kids don't know, so we do, um, we try to do some practices down at the show barn so they can learn how to get their calf out and how to lead it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but we've seen great results with our club. The kids are really into it. This year we have um, our oldest club member, um, Maggie Kirby, who's been in the club all eight years, she's going to Cornell this year to major in dairy science. No kidding. And like I said, she's a non-farm kid for sure, but it's made a difference. Yeah, Richard, talk a little bit about that, about the impact that being around the animals and being on the farm and learning about farm life has on these kids. Oh, I think it's, I think it's huge, you know. I think the biggest thing is it's something when they first join that they know nothing about. and. Um, I think it's as much uh, beneficial for us in the dairy industry as it is for the kids too, you know, just to have more people aware of, of what we do and, and, uh, and why we do it. And, uh, and the kids, uh, it seems to have a, a really big impact on them. And like Bonnie said, it's pretty rewarding when you have an, an, older, um, an older member that wants to stay within your industry is, and, and kind of seek that career. Are people surprised just how connected that you really are to the community as a business? I think it's becoming more evident with our 4-H club and the summer camps especially probably. Um, you know, because at, at the end of camp when you've got, you've got 25 kids, they all bring their parents, they bring their neighbors, <laughs> they bring their families. You know, we can have like 50 or 60 people touring this farm that maybe never would have stepped foot on the farm. And um, it's really, it's good for us as dairy farmers to have those kids go home to their parents and be so excited about what they've learned and what they know about dairy. And what's some of the reaction from parents when they see their kids with the cows? <laughs> oh, they're, they're pretty into it, actually. A lot of parents think it'd be fun to have their own at home. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but no, I think... I think it's made a real positive impact, probably more so than we anticipated when we started these camps. Mm -hmm. Have you had other farms approach you and say, this is kind of an interesting idea, should we get started with this? Um, there has been some interest. Unfortunately, it takes, it takes a lot of time. I bet. And it takes, you know, we have, um, for the 25 kids, we'll probably have 13 staff members to keep everybody safe and having fun. Um, but it's important. All righty. Well, the winner of the Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year Award is chosen by other dairy farmers. It's peer recognition that makes this award such an honor. And here's UVM Extension's Tony Kitsos to tell us what impressed the judges this year. Boy, it was a tough selection this year. We had some excellent farms that uh, are very progressive farms, uh, people that are doing things. And in this day and age, you know, water quality seems to be the one thing that uh, everybody's really had to take notice on. Fairmont Farms, They've been doing this for a while. They're a large farm operation permit. They, uh, uh, when we came on our farm visit, they, they really stepped right out and gave us the guided tour on what they've been doing for the last five or 10 years in terms of cover cropping, no-till planting, uh, managing their bunk runoff and those types of things. And the judges really appreciated them stepping right out to the fore and telling us that. Well, thank you, Tony. I'm joined now by Tucker Purchase. He became a partner in Fairmont Farm in 2005. Welcome to you. Thank you. Tucker, you worked at a large dairy farm out in California before you came here. How did that large farm in California compare to this farm? Well, the large farm in California was, uh, was uh, I would say it was completely different. It was, uh, here in Vermont, we're very spread out to milk 1,600 cows. We're very spread out. And in California, everything was right, uh, right in one spot, making it a little more efficient. Um, 
I only spent about a year out there and the weather out there is, uh, at that point was, uh, it was the same every day. So, so we didn't have to deal with uh, um, the weather that we have here in Vermont now. Um, but I would say the biggest thing that I can see is, uh, is the employees and labor force that, 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 that we have here. We have some really long-term employees that have been with us for a long time and we've got a lot of family that works here on the farm. Um, and we couldn't do it without those employees. And in California, it just seemed like there was a little more turnover, a little less um, a personal relationships with employees there. Mm -hmm. Now, as a large dairy farm in Vermont, you're held to a higher standard when it comes to regulation. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, the state uh, this last year has done a, you know, a good job developing these RAPs and and really with the RAPs the uh, the notion is we're going to have more of an all-in approach now and so really in the past your question would be correct that we were held to a higher standard because we were uh, a large farm and we were permitted uh, whereas some of the other farms um, didn't need to uh, be permitted. So I think that uh, I think that changes have been made um, and moving forward I don't think that that's necessarily a feeling that's gonna that's gonna be. Yeah. So most of the herd are registered Holsteins. What does that mean and what are the advantages to having registered animals? So we had registered animals when I was a kid growing up and I think as we expanded we kind of uh, walked away from that a little bit and, and focused on um, just kind of developing a commercial, um, a commercial herd of cattle. And um, I think it was important. Um, our son Ricky uh, joined a group, uh, New York Junior Dairy Leaders it was called, and, and he came home from that and said, you know, geez, everybody in the group shows cows and how come I didn't do that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so we uh, we talked about that, and, and uh, so we ended up, uh, I talked to Tucker and, and said, how about buying a registered calf and something good that, that uh, Ricky could show? And Tucker had some friends that were doing it, and, and it sort of took off from there. And I think what, long story short, what we've seen is it's another interest that, uh, that everybody can have, and it kind of is another little thing that you can enjoy watching a cow family develop or this special cow that you've been looking at seeing how she develops and and so it kind of keeps keeps our interest in, in something else too. And how important of a role does genetics play in modern day dairy operations would you say Tucker? Well I mean I think it's a huge it's a huge deal because um, you know the younger animals that uh, that we're raising are definitely the future of our herd um, so we use um, the best bulls we have a very extensive embryo transfer program so we um, put in about a thousand to fifteen hundred eggs every year and uh, you know I think we see that in the bulk tank I think we see that as far as our components and our longevity of our animals also. Tell us a little bit about you know looking down the road Richard um, maybe 20 years from now what what do you think your farm will look like? Um, yeah that's a that's a tough one to look look through the crystal ball because we I think we really uh, need to be able to adjust to things that are happening in the marketplace and uh, what the consumer demands are. And so to look out 20 years may be a little bit difficult, but I think that uh, there's a lot of opportunity for diversification and um, whether it be on just the dairy side or the genetics or the uh, you know the kind of agritourism part. Um, there's there's definitely a lot of opportunity there, and I think it's exciting. You know, uh, exciting industry for young people to be a part of, and with the opportunity that's out there. And Tucker, this sounds like it's been a great opportunity for you as well. Yeah, it's been an amazing opportunity for me. Um, you know, without Bonnie and Richard and John, Don, and Austin, I probably uh, wouldn't be involved in the dairy business right now. So I owe a lot to. Um, uh, to these two and uh, they actually I mean I mean we talked a little bit earlier about um, how 4-H and, and, and stuff brought people into the dairy business but I was never um, you know I didn't grow up on a dairy farm and I think Bonnie and Richard took me to visit some colleges and uh, and that's kind of where it started and uh, I'm uh, I'm super fortunate for the opportunity that everybody here has given me. Well thanks for joining us and congratulations again for being named Vermont's Dairy Farm of the Year for 2017. And that's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.